Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Insights with Dylan White. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your Friday. It's October 25th, and I'm super excited to bring you guys another one of what is Microsoft's partner solutions area, a little bit about what we do as solutions advisors and solutions integrators and what we do. So yesterday we talked everything Microsoft modern work solution area, so everything from Exchange, OneDrive, Teams, all the way up to Viva, um, compliance, monitoring uh, cloud endpoints, so all of the productive applications you can ever think of. And today we're gonna to dive into just a little bit about what capabilities we have in Azure, all the way from AI to you name it, there's lots in there. So I'm really excited to bring that to you guys. So again, thank you for being here. As always, if you like the content, and want to see more of it, let me know your thoughts on the video down below. And if you could always, as always support me, it'd be great. Like, follow, subscribe, never hurt. Uh, they, my ego loves it. So again, this is just another five minutes of what is Microsoft's partner solution area. This time we're going into Azure infrastructure. See you guys on the other side. All right, guys. So as the same thing as we did yesterday, we're just going to briefly describe each of the areas of the Azure solution area um, and just kind of briefly just describe what a project we could be. So one thing I kind of got asked for some feedback was just, hey, what are we going to be a project be in each one of those little areas? So I'm just going to briefly describe that. Again, we're still going to try to keep the video under five minutes. So let's get right into it. So first off, in Azure, you have AI capabilities, right? So obviously Azure Open AI, Azure Copilot Studio, anything around that space is AI, machine learning, all those inside of there. So a quick, easy project would be helping an organization stand up Azure Open AI infrastructure in their environment, right? Easy. That's the very basics. You can see a lot of those projects already. Another one is application development, right? So helping organizations move applications from on-premises in the cloud and re-architecting. That is a very common project, right? Modernization. Uh, then we have obviously just straight lift and shift cloud migration capabilities, right? So you want to take VMware we want it from on-premises, you want to shove it in the cloud, or we want to put it on Azure Stack, whatever that may be. Again, that lives in this space, right? There's a lot. Um, the data analytics, right? So Azure Synapse, Azure SQL. Um, again, we can lift and shift and go straight from ground to cloud, or as it's known, right? So we can migrate on-premises to the cloud, or we can modernize, right? Go straight. How can we move our SQL workloads, SQL you know, 2017, whatever it may be, and put it into an Azure managed SQL instance? Um, and then we also have hybrid cloud infrastructure, right? So HCI, also known as Azure Stack. Those of you that don't know, Azure actually works with some manufacturers already, Dell being one of the biggest ones, to create Azure backbone and backplane devices, right? Servers that are pre-built with Azure OS all pre-built. So it's already connected and connected into the Azure ecosystem with Azure services already pre-built. Lots in there. It's already, so it could be a whole month long series of its own. If you guys are interested in hybrid cloud, I know some really good hybrid cloud people. I'd love to get them on and have a series on that. So let's get it right into the next one. Keep it rolling. Internet of Things, right? So Azure has a great IoT platform, IoT Hub. Um, it's also got Defender for IoT. We'll get that in just a second. But from IoT Hub, we can bring our SCADA ecosystem into Azure and control, manage, report all on our IoT systems. It's really, really powerful. And finally, something that I'm extremely, uh, let's just say, I do almost every day, which is security and governance, right? So not only rolling out policies and how we govern our subscriptions in Azure, but security as a whole, right? Defender for Cloud is a CNAP platform of its own, right? So Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. Thank you, Yuri, for helping me say that in one sentence without messing it up first. So it's saved here in the recording. I don't have to remember it again. Cloud Native Application Protection Platform, otherwise known as a CNAP in the industry. Um, so we can protect it all the way from the server itself, all the way up to the container, all the way out to GitHub and repository protecting your code all in one platform and ecosystem, making sure that we're going from code to app and everything in between secure at all times. That's what we want right? as a security professional. We want everything to be protected in one lens and make sure we're seeing what's being done from the organization. So that being said, we see projects again ranging from let's draw out an open AI infrastructure to let's draw out hybrid cloud infrastructure you know, on Azure Stack. So that's what that would cause. We want to stay on-premises, but we want some of the capabilities of Azure, right? We have some ecosystems we're kind of split, right? We're always gonna stay there. Help us do that. All the way to help us ground it in security. What should our policy be? Can you help us with that? Can you set up a blueprint? We do 
at all, right? There's a whole thing called Microsoft Azure Cloud Option Framework. We run through all the time, right? So from a business perspective, as a second solution area, Azure is one of those ones where it is insane the amount of variance that you could do from one day to the next. And just like modern work, Azure, you could go from, again, drawing up AI to going into Azure Synapse and setting up day warehouses to go into and securing it with Azure policy. It's incredible the amount of variance that you could do in day to day as an Azure architect. Um, I lived it, still live it from security lenses sometimes now that I'm just kind of all over pre-sales, I do it even more so all over again. Um, so I'm super excited about it. Again, as you guys know, I love doing this. So hopefully you guys find the content as well. Exciting. Let me know what your favorite area is, which one of those you'd love to get into. I'd love to talk about further with you guys. Uh, for me, I think the one that I find most interesting that I don't do every day right now is probably AI just because of the hype around it. I like to demystify what the capabilities are. So that's probably where I spend the most of my just free time, just seeing if it's real, what is the reality of it. So let me know yours down in the comments below. As always, thank you guys for spending the gift of today with me. I'm excited for the mystery of tomorrow while reminiscing a little bit on the history of yesterday. I'm excited to see you guys tomorrow when we dive into everything business applications. So see you guys then.